Hey, Spencer, welcome to DC. Um, why the Wizards? Uh, how, how did this come about? And why did you choose uh, Washington? Um, what's up, Chase? Nice to meet you. So, uh, you know, obviously, free agency is almost like a game of musical chairs. Um, you know, I, I think this year's market was highlighted by point guards. Uh, you know, first and foremost, Kyle Lowry in terms of the unrestricted free agents that could make decisions and also highlighted by the, uh, you know, blockbuster Russell Westbrook deal. So, you know, when you look at the game of musical chairs and, and then uh, possible fits, um, the Wizards really stood out. And um, it was a, a place that I wanted to go to, being familiar with with Bill and his game, matching up, you know, both age-wise and, 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 you know, play style-wise. Uh, you know, so it, it just became a fit that, that popped on the board, you know, uh, pretty recently. And, and um, I'm blessed to be able to be here. And um, for those of us who, who haven't followed it every step of the way, just where are you in terms of the injury? Um, you know, what, what have you been able to do on the court lately? Yeah, um, so I, I got cleared uh, just prior to, uh, I believe it was the conference finals, actually, uh, and, and had anticipated a ramp up for the finals uh, if, you know, my former team, Brooklyn, was fortunate enough to uh, make it that far. Um, obviously, the, the season ended. Um, you know, with that being said, I continued my workout schedule. Um, what I didn't advance to was, like, you know, 5-on-5 five five play, play and things like that because we were waiting to sign the contract, obviously, just as an abundance of caution. But in terms of, like, medically, I'm cleared. Um, you know, Riley, the surgeon who performed the, sur who performed the surgery, sorry, is uh, in touch with uh, the Wizards medical team as well. And, you know, we're going to have, you know, a, a detailed uh, ramp up to play um, plan put in place. Um, I can't exactly comment on right now, but I anticipate being full go for the regular season, obviously, and, and training camp and stuff. Chris Miller. Hey, Spencer, how you doing? What's up, man? You good? Yes, sir. I, I didn't get a chance to ask you this last week when we talked, so let's just cut to the chase, man. When you bring this championship to the Wizards, how do you want your dollar? Oh, uh, you know, let, 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 let's keep it freaky. Go go, uh, 100 pennies. Why not? That's all I needed. Welcome to town, man. We'll talk Thank soon. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. DA? Hey, Spencer. How you doing, man? What's up? How you doing? Man, welcome to D.C. Hey, um... Look, you, you could have, I mean, it wasn't likely given that you were a free agent, I know, but yeah. you know, you could have run it back with Brooklyn and, and maybe try to win the chip up there. Um, what's happened to you throughout your first few years in this league that made you say, hey, you know, I want to get paid, but I also want the opportunity to maybe lead a team as a lead, as a lead guard somewhere else? Yeah, I mean, I, I think my exit from uh, Brooklyn and, and what people are making of it in terms of it being about a starting role or, or kind of, you know, clickbait and, and kind of mis, misleading. I mean, what, what I said in terms of if Brooklyn came to the table and used my bird rights and all that other stuff, that, uh, you know, I'd, I'd still be wearing a black and white. And that was very true. That wasn't the offer that they put on the table. You know what yeah. I mean? So you have to then start evaluating all, all offers, uh, you know, kind of equally. And, um, you know, this, this situation is, is very different, you know, than – in that one and, and being able to potentially uh, uh, co-lead a team, you know, with Bill and, and, you know, guide some young guys, but also, you know, learn from somebody that's, you know, at a, at a level that I haven't reached yet, you know what I'm saying, in terms of superstar um, um, in this league, right? And, you know, win games, play meaningful basketball um, in another major city, you know, the nation's capital, um, all that stuff. I mean, it's an extremely attractive, uh, you know, place to be and, and also, you know, Shep from, from the beginning of the meeting talked about how much he believed in me, which, you know, meant a ton, you know, mm -hmm. like in my basketball career. Um, it sounds kind of cliche, but like all, all I really wanted was to feel loved. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I, I bounced around and, and had, you know, hardships here and there and everywhere. And, you know, all you want to do is, is, is feel a little bit of love and, and go out there and, and put it all on the line for the, for the people that support you. And just to follow up real quick, I mean, I'm sure you were monitoring the, the Westbrook thing. You know, when you look at the guys that they brought in from L.A., yeah. all of you guys are in that same kind of 26 to 28 year old range. How much of that did, did that factor into? I think it's great. You know what I mean? And then, um, see, I'm, I'm, I'm actually familiar with uh, Pope. He was my one of my vets. I was a rookie on that Detroit Pistons team when he was right. uh, there, um, ironically. And, and, you know, Kuzma, obviously, uh, his first year, he put up, what, like 17 points a game or something like that. So he can score. You know, and then obviously Trez, six man of the year. You know, so sometimes it's all about fit. 
you know, and I, and I think um, that that's something and a piece of journey that I can definitely speak to because, you know, I've been everywhere from, you know, 15th man, two-way cut all the way up to, you know, <laughs> just around all-star level, right? Only, mm-hmm. only level I haven't reached a superstar. Um, so, you know, it, a lot of times it comes down to just like, you got the ball in your hands or, you know, this coach believes in you or the situation, somebody got hurt or whatever it may be. Uh, we, we have a lot of time in this locker room. Welcome to DC, my man. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Kareem. What's up, Spence? Kareem from the Washington Post. Uh, welcome to DC. Thank you, brother. I want to um, ask, you know, when you got hurt, you know, you're playing the best ball of your career. I was curious, you know, what was working out so well? You know, you just kind of say, you know, mentioned so many roles that you had kind of f- filled throughout your career. What was working so well at that point? And, you know, you go through the injury. Do you feel like you'll be able to get back there quickly just because, you know, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're fully healthy and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just curious about how you're feeling and how you get to back to that point of, you know, balling the way you were at that at that point. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, reaching reaching that level of play uh, takes a, a lot of factors, right? So there were a lot of injuries on our team. It was kind of a necessity. I think my my play style and the reason it's been so adaptable and, and so fluid uh, was because like really my only objective on the floor is to win, right? Like when, when I get out there, the, every decision I make is, is with that in mind. And it doesn't mean that every decision is perfect. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I shoot when I should have passed and sometimes I pass when I should have shot and sometimes I get turnovers and all that other stuff. But, you know, I genuinely believe in my heart, like the decision that I make, I was trying to do the right thing, right? Um, and, and I think that's what's led to the success, like playing the game for the, for the game's sake and because I love it. And, and it's also what's helped me, you know, for example, make like game winning shots and things like that is because, you know, I try to make the best decision. And if I miss, I know I can live with it, right. I have peace of mind and the work that, that I put in and also that I wasn't doing it for, you know, any other, you know, slick reason. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in regards to the injury, uh, it's a, it's a much easier one than I had before. Um, that's why I was so bullish on my timeline. And, and so, you know, when I, when I said I wanted to come back to the finals, um, you know, even when I first got hurt, that was speaking from experience. That wasn't, you know, somebody just, just talking out of their behind. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I feel great in workouts. Obviously, the next step is to get into live play, which will happen when I get off of vacation. Um, it, well, I estimate will happen when I get off vacation. Sorry, doctors. <laughs> uh, we have different uh, ideas on that. But, um uh, yeah, I don't. I don't see any reason why um, I won't uh, be in the starting lineup to to start the season in October. And just a quick follow: you mentioned, you know, you you, you like the prospect of playing with Brad and the fit with this team. Um, you know, you've seen him for years. What is it about your style of play and his style of play that you think meshes so well, or yeah, will yeah. mesh so well? Yeah. So obviously, the uh, one of the best scores in the league, um, one of the people that gets to the paint. Uh, the easiest and most efficient in the league. And then I think, um, you know, obviously everybody has certain certain styles, I think, in mind um, in terms of playmaking. Like, I, I typically am able to gash the defense before, uh, you know, kicking it out or, or throwing a lob or whatever it is. So, you know, you're able to create more calls out in that scenario. Even if they don't necessarily lead to assists, you're causing havoc and you're making plays in that manner. And if you look at the depth of our team, obviously Bill doesn't necessarily need that because, you know, he can go get a bucket on everybody, right? But Look at the depth of our team, uh, you know, Pope who can really shoot <clears throat> as a quick first step. You got Kuz, obviously, when attacking closeouts, he's going to be a monster. Um, you know, Rui, same thing, right? Super athletic, uh, getting lane off, off cuts and things, dunking on people. Um, Gafford, lob threat. You know, Trez, obviously, a play finisher um, off the pocket pass and also, you know, as a lob threat as well. So, you know, you, you, you got them all there. And even the versatility being 6'6", uh, you know, to play with Aaron, you know, in, in, in those times, right? Um, kind of having uh, three people that can really handle the ball at one time, um, being able to play off the ball. Obviously, Aaron, uh, you know, is a, is a very good player in his own right as well. Um, I, I think he's one of the best uh, backup point guards in the league. Um, you know, I, I didn't tell him this uh, prior, obviously, because I was playing against him. But, you know, I, I hate it when he guards me. So, you know, I'm happy he's on my team now. That's perfect. Appreciate you. Fred. Hey, Spencer, welcome to DC. Sorry for the uh, background hotel music here. Um, no, I'm a, I'm, I'm just curious uh, regarding like you're, you're a point guard, which means that you are so responsible for so much of the offense. And now you have a whole group of 
new teammates who have particular ways they like to receive the ball on jump shots or where they like the ball on lobs, all that kind of stuff. What's, what's your process of learning an entire roster of, of new players and kind of learning the nuances of their game in that aspect? Um, I think the process actually has to start um, with our new coach, uh, Mr. Unsell Jr. Uh, you know, if, if I was familiar with his style and, and like playbook and other stuff, like let's say he was, you know, uh, like, like a spolster or something. So I knew his actions from just playing the heat a lot, right? Um, that would be one thing, right? Where you can already kind of like spitball what's going to happen. But obviously with him being a new coach, it's about getting on the same page with him hopefully so that I can convey his messages um, onto the floor and obviously and, and things like that. And then from there, you, you start to put the puzzle pieces together, right? And, you know, you understand, obviously, Gafford is, is above the rim, right? You understand, um, you know, Kuz attacking closeouts, obviously has a little bit of post-up games, kind of real versatile score. Um, just just think about each and every player. Like, you're going to – you already start to pick up just from the standpoint of playing with them so much. But then also throughout practice and, and film study and <clears throat> having open, transparent conversations. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go up to him and tell him, like, look, bro, I'm not perfect. Like, I want to know, like, what you need from me. You know, I, I think uh, that's that's something that I learned coming through the various ranks of, like I said, 15th man and up. Like, you know, when somebody came to me when I was, you know, 7th, 8th man and was like, hey, Spence, like, you know, if I set a screen this way, would it help you get in the paint? Man, it was super impactful. You know what I mean? I, I, I didn't feel like, you know, uh, less than, or I didn't feel like, you know, without a voice, I felt like, you know, empowered in those moments and, and you know, able to say, hey, look, man, if you, if you turn the screen this way, you know, it helps me get my defender, you know, on my hip. And, and this is how I can go about it so that you also get the lob when you do this. You know, does that work for you? And, and I think when the communication is open like that, um, you know, it can make us a powerful team. Thanks, man. Neil. Hey, Spencer. Welcome to DC. I'm curious, you know, what communication have you had with Brad either before the free agency started, since free agency has started, and how have you guys maybe started to already pick each other's minds a little bit? Before free agency would be tampering, bro. What are you talking about? Of course. Okay. I'm not trying to get anybody. Well, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> Baker, Toronto, Heat, whatever. They didn't want that tampering. We just don't tamper, man. Don't do that. Understood, understood. <laughs> nah, uh, you know, in terms of uh, speaking to Brad, obviously, uh, you know, having his vote of confidence in terms of uh, this signing uh, meant a ton. You know, you always want to uh, be on the same page with, with the superstars on, on the team, uh, or superstar, sorry, on the team. Um, you know, and for the most part, his, his thing has been about, you know, coming in, playing basketball the right way, like leading the group, um, you know, all the stuff. I, I don't think he is going to really experience any on-court friction for me. Like, you know, we, we, we know what it is. Like, obviously, he can score on a variety of ways um, and, and do some special things out there. And it, it, it's my job to, you know, get out the way when I need to get out the way and, and, and try to help enhance when, when I can enhance. And then, you know, at the times when he's off the floor, making sure that the, the ship still rides right and that there's no uh, fall off. So, you know, I think putting it simply like that, you know, just staying aggressive in, in, in those three facets, um, both well for our roster. Thanks, welcome again. Thank you. Matt. Hey Spencer, Matt Paris from Washington Times. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, virtually. Um, just curious, like you mentioned monitoring the point guard market. Was it Washington from the very beginning or how did, like how did Kyle Lowry's decision, for example, kind of impact your thinking or how did you kind of go about that process of, all right, settling on Washington basically? Um, no, I mean, obviously, Russ was the domino that, that opened up Washington because prior to the Russ trade, like, you know, Washington wasn't um, on the table. Uh, you know, obviously, going back to throughout the season, end of season, stuff like that, um, when they're kind of starting to dole out the, the point guard rankings, right? Um, we knew Kyle Lowry was probably the first domino, right? With the way CP was playing with the Suns and Conley with the Jazz, you know, both All Stars and all the other stuff, finals, et cetera you figured they would probably go back to their team. Now, there could have been curveballs, but that's what, you know, the money would have been on. So you're really just saying, like, all right, in the unrestricted free agent market or point guard market, you know, who's going where and who's getting paid what and who are the teams that need point guards. And so that's just kind of how you look at it. And to me, I felt like 
Um, I should be the second one off the board. Um, understanding Kyle's won a championship. Obviously, he was going to command a, a near max contract, et cetera. Um, that's genuinely how I felt. And, you know, what I, what I spoke about um, during that free agency period. Um, I think it shook out that obviously I was third because Lonzo went to Chicago. But, you know, overall, with, with the Russ deal, I'm um, opening up obviously Washington and, and having a rapport, like I said, with Bill um, and, and Shep really believing in me, uh, you know, it made it a, a perfect fit. And I, I noticed you tweeted uh, just Hagrid, you know, the, the Harry Potter reference. I'm just curious, are you a Harry Potter guy? Yeah, I actually read the books uh, when I was young. So, yeah, I'm a Harry Potter guy. And um, I just thought it was, it was super fitting. It was actually one of my friends that sent it to me. So I can't take full credit for it. But, you know, when the when the rumors started coming out, they had said in a joking manner, like, hey, you should post this if uh, you choose to go to Wizards. And I was like, yeah, okay. Like, all right. Like, I didn't really think much about it, obviously, when the rumors first started, because that's, you know, week, two weeks before, whatever it is, like, it's rumors. Um, but once it really started coming down to it, and obviously everything was coming to fruition, um, I had a, I had that mental note in my head, so I, I pulled it out of text. Thank you. Hey, Ben Standing, are you driving and watching this press conference at the same time? Just make sure everybody's safe at this point. <laughs> I'm literally not driving. I'm standing in a parking lot on the road, so I took a shot. Um, Spencer, I've been standing with The Athletic. Nice to meet you. Um, mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity, you talked about, obviously, joining with Brad and the attractiveness that comes with that. Um, player movement in this league is pretty common, and if not rampant in some spot, and for better or for worse, Brad has often mentioned in various trade rumors. How did you navigate that, if at all, when you were making your own decision about your future as to what the future here could be beyond, you know, w w with Brad's situation? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously I spoke to him and obviously he's his own man and, and his decisions are his own. Um, so I can't talk about, uh, you know, his plans or, or what he's going to do. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think that we have a chance to have a, a – and if that's not what comes to fruition, then it's not. But I think, uh, you know, right now we're both willing to kind of take a little bit of a bet on each other and, and, and try to do something special. So, you know, all we can kind of focus on is the now – and um, you know if, if plans change and they change, but you know we're we're here now and have a and have a really special chance. Thank you, Alex. Hey Spencer, welcome to DC. Nice to meet you. Um, <clears throat> you know, re recent history for the Wizards. You look at the point guard position; it's been such a big part of this team with Russ and with John Wall. Before that, even going back to Gilbert Arenas, and each of them seems to have made such a big mark on the franchise and the area, what, what kind of mark are you hoping to make here in DC? Oh, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Gilbert, John or Russ. Um, you know, yeah, those are, those are all dudes with, uh, uh, very interesting personalities. I mean, you know, you got some of the best players, you know, obviously Russ, one of the best players to ever play in terms of the triple doubles. You got Gilbert, one of the best scorers of all time. You got, John, who had an extended run where you could argue he was the best point guard in the league, you know, and, and so, you know, you got to always uh, respect the accomplishments of what people have done. Um, I think I'll be the first point guard in D.C. history to possibly lobby senators about Bitcoin. So we can go with that. Um, but but in all seriousness, I think um, just, just my style of play is very different from them. Um, like I said, I respect everything that they did. Um, but, you know, my – what I want to be known for is winning. Um, and, and that's what I hope to bring to the franchise. Like at the end of the day, just, you know, whatever it kind of takes. So I think my career kind of, kind of shows that. Thank you. No problem. Quinn. Welcome to DC Spencer. Hey, listen, first off, I'm gonna ask you a question. Where you get all your information from? Cause you, you was tweeting out news about my stuff before I knew it. How'd that work? Hey, I'll tell you after this. I'll okay. tell you after this. I, you know, that's tampering if I tell you in front of all these people. I got, got, got it. I, I hear it. Welcome to DC, first and foremost. Um, real quick question for you. I talked to your trainer Olin, who is not my source, by the way. Um, but he was he was telling me all about um how you're the most underrated player in the NBA. Does that kind of go into how you play your game, especially how you're looking at this upcoming season, and kind of tying that into the fact that. You know, you felt like you should have been the second point guard off the board and you weren't. Because can you kind of maybe talk about the chip on your shoulder league-wide? Oh, I mean, that's that's been there. But that, 
I mean, that started way before the NBA, man. Like, you know, I felt I should have been, you know, more respected in high school. I felt like I should have been recruited higher in college. I felt like, you know, consistently. Like, that's just kind of been who I am, but also what's got me here, right? Like, mm -hmm. if I was a complacent person, um, you know, then, then when you get you get cut and people think you're going to China, do you just take the bag and go to China or do you still want more for yourself? And are you willing to stick through the D league and, 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 you know, some of those punches and, you know, the, the long bus rides and, and all that other stuff. So, you know, some of that has made me who I am. Right. And, you know, I, I can get on here and I can bring up stats about how I'm underrated and all that other stuff, but, you know, it doesn't really serve much of a purpose. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here now. I think uh, we have an amazing chance to win. And if I'm able to play at the level that I can play at, uh, similar to the 1920 season and hopefully beyond, and I can compliment Brad in the way that, um, you know, I believe that I can, then, uh, you know, we can be an extremely uh, powerful team in the Eastern Conference um, and, and, and go out there and compete with everybody on a nightly basis and, uh, you know, make, make DC family proud. And what would you say was your like the biggest thing you had to work on this off season, other than of course your health, like what about your game that you've tried to really bring to another level? Well, my game, um, I think obviously, uh, you know, this is, this is low hanging fruit. Um, when you look at three point shooting, mm -hmm. my catch shoot numbers are solid. My off the dribble numbers aren't, aren't very good. Um, but with obviously working on health and understanding kind of the, the barriers to movement patterns and things is, you know, you have to wait X amount of times you can cut, and X amount of times you can run and all that stuff. You end up shooting a lot of spot shots. So I hope to continue to improve that, um, be even better uh, in that area because, you know, we have a very, another very powerful, uh, you know, habit creator on the floor, obviously. And, and I could be the beneficiary of, of some of that action. And, and if I can uh, spot up and shoot the ball well, then it's a, a, a really great dynamic for our roster. Appreciate you, Spence. We'll talk soon. Let's do it. We'll take the last question from Karita. Hi, Spencer. How are you? Uh, you briefly mentioned Daniel Gafford earlier, as well as Rui. I'm curious, can you go into a little bit more detail about how you see yourself meshing with them and just being the younger guys on the roster? And also, uh, what intrigues you about what you've seen from them? Um, so, li little known fact. Uh, uncle who I've worked out with since I was like about 10, 12, um, also does like pre-draft stuff like that for Washington. So he uh, was training Rui. And so I'm kind of familiar with Rui and his game and being kind of, you know, forward and a bigger uh, slasher and able to kind of get in the paint, be the beneficiary and cutting and things like that. Um, you know, so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and, and just being able to obviously offer the, the experience that I have and, and hopefully they can take from it. Uh, what what helps them and and discard what doesn't help, right? Um, with with Gafford, obviously, I know you know live body, live threat. Um, I'm familiar with playing with them. Uh, I think you know in the in that same 1920 season, uh, you know I was uh, of the top three live combinations in the league. I was a part of two of them, right? I believe uh, me and DeAndre Jordan were first. I think James Harden and Clint Capella were second, and then me and Jared Allen were third. So you know, it, it speaks to an ability to have good ball placement above the rim. And obviously, you know, everybody jumps different. Some people are one leg jumpers, two leg jumpers, all that other stuff. So there is some chemistry and timing that has to, you know, take place as it did with DJ and Jared. Cause you know, for example, DJ is a one foot jumper and wants to catch a lot with his right hand off his left leg, even though he's left-handed, you know, it's why I don't know. Uh, and, and Jared Allen is, is, a, is a two foot, two hand guy typically um, from either side. Uh, and so learning Gafford in that manner, uh, you know, might, might take a couple practices, but, you know, once you get that down, it, it should be uh, on and on and rolling.